Hello, can you hear me now? Hello out there? Hello out there? No sound, can't hear, no sound. We can hear. I don't even know what happened, man. Like, okay, I turned it... Oh, I did have it on mute. See, I'm still trying to figure this whole thing out, man. All right, so I can see the comments. I have a new little stream thing going on. I want to shout out to my friend Greg. Uh, he, he does a channel called Manifestation Movement. Does a lot of live streaming. Showed me how to do this, so thank you, my brother. Uh, this is definitely going to be a trial run, but I also want to do something fun. I've been wanting to do something fun. You're going to have to overlook any ambient noise. I live in an apartment complex. My refrigerator sounds like a lawnmower, and there's a fan on the laptop that I'm using, so I'm sure there's going to be some ambient noise. Please just bear with me. Uh, maybe one day it'll be better, but just to have... I'm actually using the camera to stream to YouTube right now. And that to me is so cool, but also so very terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Let me just try. I'm going to try to get like both windows up at the same time. All right. So who wants some free stuff? Um, if you read the description, I'll give you kind of a layout of what you need to do. But I have just a few items here. I have a whole lot of other stuff. We're going to do stuff like this in the future. Please stay with us on the video, though, so I can get through the entire thing. So that if you want to participate, you're going to be able to, to get a couple of these things. These are not things that have a lot of value, okay? But um, there are people out there, what I'm saying is, as far as monetary value, it does. It, these are not expensive things. All right, But these Bibles are really good Bibles. They're Bibles that I particularly love. And, um, and I can buy more to give out in the future. I'll kind of talk to you about what the Bibles look like. Um, some favorite aspects of it for me and then actually I'm gonna give away one of my old study Bibles and, and a few of my books uh, once again I want to reiterate I don't really make anything off of these books like a couple dollars every time somebody buys one it's just to get the information out and you can buy those on Amazon uh, it's a book that I wrote when I was 15 uh, 16 I think I finished it when I was 16 the writing is not amazing or spectacular there's some errors in it so on and so forth but I believe that if you Read it with the right perspective and with the heart of God, you'll get some things out of it and it will bless you. So with that said, um, Jackson, no, it's not about you, silly. All right. Good to see you, though. All right. Very cool. So let's talk about these Bibles. Um, these particular, I have two Bibles that I'm going to give away. One is black, one is brown. They're pretty much the same Bible. All of the Bibles I'm going to be giving out are King James Version. This one is a brown one. I love the way that the font looks. If you just look at the font, it is big writing, but it, it makes it feel like you're reading a book as opposed to very tiny writing, which is not my favorite. But the font, if I can get it to focus, the font is very, very beautiful font and let me just see if I can go to the beginning of a chapter and give you an idea let me see here when I'm talking and when I'm trying to flip as you guys have been able to tell for quite a long time it doesn't really work out and my fingers are always be doing stuff they don't want to be doing all right as you can tell see that just the font is just really really nice uh, the spine I particularly love the spine of the Bible all right it's Christian art publishers um, the, the, the only thing I don't really like is the two-tone and all of that, but it's still a really nice Bible. I'm going to give this one out. I have the exact same one in black. Uh, I have one that I actually use, that I take around, I preach from, that's actually this exact Bible. This is not the exact Bible. I have my name on mine. I could, if I had it near me, I could show you, but I don't. Uh, but this is the exact same Bible, but it's black, and it has exact same font. Just really, really cool Bible. Um, all right, so... I have two of these Bibles I'm going to give out, and then I have this study Bible here. I don't, I'm just being real with you, I don't particularly like it. Uh, it just the notes, I, I, I want to know historical data and, you know, uh, information from the times, all of that, and this is more like life application, encouragement, advice in the notes, and I just really, you know, I don't really need that, but this could really help somebody out there uh, I haven't used it a whole lot a lot of the pages are still stuck together 
Um, but this is a, a pretty expensive Bible. It's a Holman KJV study Bible. Uh, I think it will bless someone. It's not in perfect condition. You can see there is some uh, bending of the spine, but it is quite large and it's quite a good Bible. As you can tell, there's a lot of good notes in here. Let's see if you can see that. Idols in your heart, not a good thing, right? We want to throw down every idol. So I'm going to give this Bible away. And then I have three of these books. Um, Voyage with God. This is the book I was telling you about that I wrote when I was 15, finished when I was 16. Like I said, the writing is is not like, it, it's got some errors in it, but I think it will speak to you and it will bless somebody. So here's what you do if you want one of these items on any social media account that you have, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I think every, all four of these, you can use hashtags. If you want to make a YouTube video, make sure that you put the hashtag either in the title or in the description, and I believe I can search uh, for those hashtags. But the hashtag that you want to use is hashtag TOC Bible Giveaway, and giveaway is spelled G-I-V-E-A-W-A-Y, and you want to put it all together, hashtag TOC Bible Giveaway in one hashtag, and in three minutes, you have to tell me two things. One, tell me which of the items you would like, and then two, um, tell me how you like to read your Bible. Do you like to just read through as much as you can, as fast as you can, and just get it in? Like you're just hungry and you're eating? Do you like to read slowly and just really let it digest and, and taste it? Um, you know, there's good things to be said about both types of, you know, both of those uh, methods of reading. Uh, or do you, you know, every time you read, do you do more of like a Bible study? One way in which I love to read my Bible here recently that I haven't always read like this is I like to read very slowly, ask a lot of questions. If, you know, let's say it's in the Gospels, Jesus is talking, I'll say, why was the Lord saying this? For what purpose? What was his audience? What was he trying to accomplish? What was his motive? You know, what were the motives of other people? Why did they say those things? Why did they do those things? What was David's motive? You know, King David, what was his motivation when he was, you know, um, in prayer? And, and, and you just ask a lot of these questions and it really helps you to, to delve deeper. And that's probably my favorite way to read the Bible currently. Um, but just share with me. There is no wrong answer. I mean, there possibly could be. But what I'm saying is I just want to see your heart. I want to hear you, what you have to say. And I'm just going to pick winners at random. Like I have six people potentially that I could give these items to. Uh, I do have more Bibles. I have some other small uh, giveaway Bibles. That, uh, they're small gift Bibles. I could give some of those out. Whatever it is, just tell me what you would like. Maybe you don't have a Bible at all. I don't really know how to ship internationally, but I can learn. Uh, if you're somewhere where you're just like desperate and you yourself, I'm not saying just so you can distribute in your village or whatever. We do a lot of that, but this is not the purpose of this video. What I'm saying is if you yourself need a Bible and you're just like, man, I don't have any Bible. I need a Bible. Just be honest, have integrity. Um, let me know and I will do anything I can. I'll do as much as I can to get uh, the, the people that are saying that a Bible for you to read. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. I wanted to test the new... Well, it is a new camera, but test the new live feed. Uh, let's read some of the cons, comments and then really just uh, really just kind of have a little bit of fun tonight. Has the Lord led you to a Bible study? I just like the Bible study on my own. You know, a lot of times I don't do a lot of Bible studies online because I want a Bible study myself. And if I'm teaching online, I'm not a teacher. I'm an evangelist. I can teach, but it's not my calling. We can all teach. We all should teach. So not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't want to do a lot of Bible studies on this channel. That's not really the, the purpose of this channel. I want to leave that to those who are called for that. The teachers and the pastors. I'm called to be an evangelist. Mine is to rally cry uh, and to win souls into the kingdom and to draw them into the, the churches and the fellowship of, um, you know, the local fellowship or whatever. So my calling is a little bit different. I want to keep my focus on what God has burned my heart to do. It doesn't mean that we can't teach. It doesn't mean we won't ever do Bible study. But it's not something I'm going to be uh, doing a lot or all the time. I want to be doing Bible studies myself. So that's kind of my heart. Okay, what else? What else? I don't really have anything else to say, but I don't really want to get on off the check. Can we somehow make the video private? Um, I think so. 
I, I think if you made it, like let's say on YouTube, you can make it unlisted. You can send me the link via email, torchofchrist at gmail.com. The only thing is the potential, I get a lot of emails. There's the potential that I would uh, not see the email. So it's better. I'm going to go on each social media account. I'm going to hashtag search and I will find all the videos and watch them. Uh, I want to see your heart, though. You know, I want to see that that you know you you have a heart for learning about God, going deeper in His Word, understanding the depth of His character. Those are the things that really, truly matter. Okay, let me ask you guys some questions, if you can. I, I know these aren't the most important questions to ask, but just because this is first time doing this and it's a little bit different, let me guys know how well you can hear me in the comments. Please just let me know how well you can hear me. Um, is there a lot of ambient noise? Is the volume high enough? Do I need to turn it down? Should I turn it up? Uh, is it very clear? Is the lighting messed up? Should I, should I try to change the lighting up? I'm not good at lighting, so there probably is some, some horrible lighting. Just let me know what... Uh, okay, well, everybody's saying it's no ambient noise is perfect. That's good. Praise God. Volume is perfect. Very clear. Lighting is good. Okay, cool. I'm not a lighting guy. This is stuff I'm trying to learn, but I, you know what? I'm here in my apartment just kind of hanging out. Uh, everything's a mess because I wasn't even planning to do this today. Something happened, and I've been trying to get this done, and there's been a lot of like glitches and, and things to work around. I didn't have a microphone. I actually just had to go out and buy a microphone just earlier today because the ambient internal laptop microphone is terrible. So I went out and I bought a microphone, and I'm using the camera to actually live stream. There was an update that Canon released recently where you can actually do that. So anyway, I don't want to like say too much and then you just say, cool story, bro. <laughs> but I'm trying to, to kind of give you guys an idea. Cool. All right. Yeah, it is the best one, brother, because um, we're using the camera for this live feed. So it's actually going to look really, really, really good as opposed to using my cell phone, which is what I typically do. The evolution of this is I'm going to be setting up kind of more of a what I would like to think is more of a permanent type of studio. It's just like a little space I'm going to create where I can sit down on a stool. Everything will already be set up. I don't have to mess around with it a lot because right now the way it's set up, I have to set it up. I have to tear it down each time because I can't walk through my apartment like this. It's just too messy. But eventually I want to have this little space where I can do that and I'm actually looking into those things currently. So please pray for that. I just have to find the right place. And we're going to be doing lots of cool stuff. Uh, things are growing and building and evolving. And it's just a good time to be serving the Lord. All right. Yes. TOC Bible giveaway. Thank you. Any questions? Let's, let's go through. We'll answer a few questions. Which I got. Which I got. All right, well, I guess, where did I get this hat? I think uh, Walmart or something for like five bucks, five dollars. Um, but I've had it for some years. When will I be near New Jersey? Probably not for a while. Uh, how can your parents be saved? Uh, pray. Uh, you, you're never going to be able to preach your family into God's kingdom. You have to pray for them. Show Jesus in your lifestyle. That's really the most important thing. Show Jesus in your, in your lifestyle through your life. How do we learn to hear the voice of God? What's his voice like? Uh, prayer, spending time alone with God. The more you pray, the more you talk to God, the more you'll be able to hear God, recognize his voice, be able to discern when he's speaking to you. A lot of people are hearing the voices of demons. They think it's God because they have no discernment and they don't know what God's voice sounds like. So we have to be able to discern. We have to be able to seek deliverance, quiet the noise. The devil is continuously injecting thoughts into our hearts and our minds, trying to deceive us, lead us astray, get us to believe those dirty lies. And we have to be able to take every thought captive, filter through all of that, and hear only the voice of God. And that happens through fasting and prayer and reading his word. God will speak to us through his word, but we have to know his voice. And, and he says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. So that is the best way. There is no easy, uh, there's no easy solution. There's no shortcuts. Fast, pray, read your Bible. Seek the heart of God. That's it. All right. My, my mom is doing good. Just keep praying for her, please. I want her to, to really surrender her heart over to the Lord and begin living uh, just uh, on fire for God. So please just continue praying for her. Her name is Janet. 
Um, all right. Yes, you, you are going to be able to join trips in the future. Right now I have a group of uh, about four men of God that are uh, techie. You know, they're, they're, they do a lot of the tech stuff. And they build apps and do software engineering, all this other stuff. I don't even really understand it. But I have a group that's working on creating a tool on the website. It's going to take maybe a couple months. But we're going to create a tool on the website where people can go and input their information, volunteer for missions, volunteer to offer their skill sets, their, you know, their legal uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, like if you have uh, like things, that, professional skills that you want to either volunteer at a discounted rate or for free or at a full rate even or just volunteer for trips and be involved and you can put your skills there and there will be like a workflow where you can answer questions. It will capture that. We can filter from it based on our needs and opportunity and hopefully that will get more people involved. Um, amen. I will not be in Colorado for a while, uh, but I do like Colorado. Several years ago, we preached in Denver. Go back and look for those YouTube videos. Actually, really cool. Maybe do some search on, you know, four or five years ago, I was putting a lot of stuff, a lot of content on Facebook, and that didn't all carry over to YouTube. So I probably have hundreds and hundreds of videos that are on Facebook that are now private. I made everything private and moved over to a ministry page, but so much of that isn't even visible anymore and it doesn't carry over to YouTube. I'm sorry about that. So there are actually a lot of preaching videos that you can't see because it's all kind of locked into Facebook and, and it's just too much work to, to move it over. Um, all right. What denomination am I a part of? I'm not part of a denomination. I believe in the Bible. Um, I do believe in the power of God. Uh, I believe in, that, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can go on the website and get more answers to the questions. Let's look at uh, the statement of faith. And if you have any other questions, you can email us, uh, email me, and, and I'll get back to you if I can. Do I get prophecies? Uh, yes, we've talked about it for a while. You know, God, God doesn't, we don't get to choose when God speaks to us, but God does speak to his children. And when he does, we pass along the message. Uh, a lot of times it's not a good, sometimes it can be a word of encouragement. So we can speak into somebody's life individually. We call those words of knowledge, words of wisdom. But we also have those times where God speaks a message to us to go in and to, to pass to a large group of people, which is what you saw during the 10 cities over 10 days. And specifically the one in Washington, D.C. I just only spoke what God gave me. And that was really it. And um, yeah, so we have to be obedient, even if it doesn't make sense. Even if people don't want to hear it, we have to obey the Lord. Amen. What God gives us freely, we give to others freely. That's right. Praise God. What made me write a book so young? Just the burden of the Lord. He was burdening my soul uh, to write. I actually had uh, what you would call a, like a vision when I was 15. I wasn't even saved yet. I wasn't even born again yet at this time, but I received a vision from the Lord. And I think within three months, I had a, a very powerful Damascus Road experience that changed my life. And um, I ran from God for a long time. So the story is not just happily ever, you know, it's not just a happy ending where everything worked out from there. But um I did get radically saved, and God, three months before that, it was two to three months, something like that, gave me a really cool vision, and the book is based around that. Um, I, you know what, I can even just read it to you right now, if you guys are interested. Might not even make sense, but that's all right. Uh, it's called Purpose with God. It's on page 18 of the book. It says along, this is literally, this is the, the vision that God gave me when I, it was the very first vision before I was even saved when I was 15 years old. It's called Purpose with God. And this is more written like a devotional type of, it's colorful language. There's a, a surface level meaning. There's a, a lot of meaning that's deeper. It's very short. It's about a page and a half. So I'm just going to read it. Along the vast horizon of never ending joy, I see a strength, strength which carries its own light. Surrounded by the oceans whose waves crest the earth, I sit and reserve the fullness of its greatness Allowing only few, I know this strength is connected with my heart. I sit and stare out at the endless ocean, only to see a compelling light that hovers. It swiftly soars to and fro across the waters, motioning me to come near. I sit in awe. And, and as I'm writing this, this is what I'm actually, I actually saw. I sit in awe. It swiftly soars to and fro across the waters, motioning me to come near. I sit in awe, unaware of anything else. I try to understand the concern of the strength which holds me. It cries out at me, motioning for my help. I undoubtedly hold the key to this phenomenon and unaware of what it might be, I become frustrated. 
Ever so gently, I drift along the now still waters across this endless ocean, warily waiting on the strength to show meaning in my eyes. Patiently, I sit longing for an answer. The strength able to hold the sun at its place and shadow the world in its fingertips sits waiting for me to answer its plea. Too far to hear the words. I weep from now emotionally involved. Only the cry must be heard, unable to do anything but sit and watch this beautiful array of light. I look for a sign to help me understand the problem which has been aroused. Soaring over water, the compelling light connects with my heart and I understand the fullness of the situation presented before me. Bewildered, I wonder what I'm involved for. Visions surround me and my intentions are understood. The strength which sits vaguely but distinguishable, distinguishable along the horizon now portrays the outline of a human. Above the human sits a rainbow with a heart inscribed within it. Never-ending hope for all of the human race, those made with his love, is the compelling light. It shows that one day hope will be all that's left. The one thing created in life and filled with love now hates its maker. It curses his name and ignores his cries. The drift is time. Time moves ever so slowly in a never-ending flow. But one day the light from the strength will reach out and grab you, bringing you home. The outline of the human means we are created in his image by his love and he will have mercy on us. But time is running short. Mercy is only temporary. Our constant drift will carry us either way. A rays of light dance across the vivid sky and I weep with joy. I raise my sails for the winds pick up and purposefully move toward the strength which holds my heart. The aspects of my life are understood and yet my duties are unfulfilled. So that was the very first uh, I, I received this this vision. It's not it's not like this open air vision, but it was like I had this vision that was imprinted in my mind. I was actually taking a shower uh, at 15 years old. I didn't understand it, but I just wrote it down. And within the coming months, God began to show me what the meaning was. And this whole entire book is based off of that. Now I, I haven't read I've gone through and read this book again in years, but I do believe there is some significance in here that can help you. There's some revelation, there's some prophetic words. The very last page is a prophecy of judgment against America that I wrote. Um, I don't even remember, to be honest with you. It was right around this, right before September 11th happened, I believe. Um, either way, that's when I wrote this book was in the, the, around the middle of September. And I was in the middle of writing this book. It only took me three or four months to write it, but in the middle of it, uh, is when September 11th happened. So that was really kind of significant. This prophecy of judgment against America on the last page is based on a dream that I had. I don't have a lot of dreams. I'm not a dream type of guy where God gives me a lot of dreams and visions and things. But during this time, I did have some dreams and, and it was quite significant. And, and I put it into the book. Um, the whole thing is about raising up an army in this end time to it's a spiritual army that we fight on our knees in prayer for the souls of the lost and, and the book i'm working on now which i need prayer just so that i keep moving on it it's been a difficult journey um just because my life is busy dude and, and i'm always doing videos i'm always traveling i'm always with family and it's just there's not a lot of time to write and i need to make time I feel the burden to get it done, and uh, I'm about 80 pages in right now. Um, but it's it's also going to be uh, uh, based around the same thing, but it's going to be the, the layout, the structure, everything's going to be completely different, and it will be focused on really just feeding your soul and ra helping prepare you to, to be, I can't talk, to be raised up in this end time, to be used of God. Uh, and, and I don't even want to tell you the title because I'm excited. I think the title is just really amazing. Um, but I'm excited about it. So anyway, I'm not trying to promote this at all. I really just don't care. Uh, check it out if you want to. It's on Amazon. But I'm just giving you a little bit of info because of the giveaway. And I'm giving away like three of these. And I have like two boxes full of these that I ordered recently. And I can just, I can send them to whoever wants them. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I just think that it would encourage you. All right, I'm gonna have to get used to this, man. I, I, I really would, okay, cool. I actually can see I have 259 people watching. That's cool. Because it's hard to kind of see. How do I, somebody asks, how do you know it's the voice of God and not the voice of the devil? Because when you pray, when you fast, when you read God's word, you will know his voice. As you draw near to the Lord, his voice will be recognizable. He said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. So the problem that we don't want to find ourselves in is that we are so afraid of only hearing the devil's voice that we drown out or we, we push away every voice there is. 
Because if you're not hearing the voice of God, how are you going to have any guidance in your life? God speaks to us through his word, yes. But God also speaks to us through prayer. And we have to use discernment. But discernment can show us what's coming from God, what's coming from the enemy. What drives me crazy is there are so many professing Christians out there who believe every voice belongs to the devil. And that the only way God can speak to you is through his word. And that every other voice, that's whether it's in your ear, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, whatever, every other voice out there belongs to Satan. That's a lie. And if you believe that, you have now over-glorified the devil. You're basically saying that the devil is way more powerful than God, which is blasphemy. Because you're saying that the devil has the power to speak to us, but God doesn't or he won't. He chooses not to. And that's just dumb, if you ask me. Okay, because God wants to be here for his children. God wants to be in the lives of his children. Sure, the enemy is constantly barraging our minds and our hearts and everything with distracting thoughts and, and deceptive words and, and deceitful images and visions and even false prophetic dreams. So many people try to speak for God and they're having dreams about the rapture being on this and this date or judgment coming in this and this way. And, and these demons love to pretend to be God. We have spirits of divination, which is false prophecy, which spirits of Python, uh, you know, all of these different demons that are trying to deceive God's people, and I get it, but to say that God never speaks to his children, that is ignorance, or it's just you, you're so afraid of, of hearing the wrong voice that you've pushed out every voice. And we see that all throughout, all throughout the body of Christ. So many people are afraid of falling into the false manifestation or the false uh, form of a, of a thing that they push away the whole thing altogether. They're afraid of falling into ecumenicalism, so they push away every idea of unity. Unity in the body of Christ is huge. Ecumenicalism is from Satan. So you have to be able to push away the perverted form of the, uh, of the thing that the devil tries to get you pulled into. And instead of focus on what the biblical teaching is, that Paul taught very biblical unity within the body of Christ. All right? We talk about, there, there's so many different things. You can have godly visions. You can have demonic-driven visions. You can have... Um, you know, we pray and, and Satanists pray. Um, you know, we do good works. There's good works out there that are motivated by satanic powers. There's a, a false counterfeit version to almost every single thing that God does. And I would probably say everything that God does. But if you can identify a false perverted thing that the devil does, perverted just means you're taking something that's good and godly and you're changing and distorting the intent or the, or, or the, the action of it to be something that's unbiblical, ungodly, and distorted. You see what I'm saying? So you're taking something that's good and you're using it in a way that God never intended. We talk about perversion in a sexual realm. You're taking good, biblical, godly sexual relations between a man and a woman who are married perverted form of that is now we're taking sexual acts we're changing the natural use of the body because people are burning in their flesh that's perversion that's changing the natural use into something that god never intended but perversion is is a term that can be used in many different aspects uh, of what we see and know all right we we talk about um lord help me because i can't even think because uh, of course I, I need to think off the top of my head and i can't because i'm on a webcam <laughs> it happens uh, but there are so many different examples. We have prophecy. We have the perverted form, which is false prophecy. We have good and godly undefiled religion. Then we have these, these religious spirited movements that are based on you trying to attain God through works and, and striving in the flesh. That's the perverted form. Um, you know, you have even translations of the Bible that are good and godly and holy. Then you have perverted things that are, these translations have been changed and, and altered in a way like the message is so bad. Do not read the, the message translation. It's been perverted. Uh, and that's what we talk about. We have a good godly version, but we have things that have been perverted by the enemy. Um, but you have to know God's voice. You have to be able to distinguish his voice. You have to be able to know uh, what he's speaking in this time. And, and yes, he speaks through to us through his word but we also have to know that he does speak to us through prayer and by seeking God being on our faces spending time with him and, and I promise you if you uh, seek him with all with, with all your heart with a full heart he will be faithful and he will he will just it, 
how do you explain it? When God speaks to me, a lot of times it's a revelation. It's a knowing. I'll pray and I won't know. I'll pray and I won't know. I'll pray and I won't know. And all of a sudden I'll pray and I'll just know. And I won't even know how I know, but something changed and God revealed in my soul exactly what he wants from me, whether it's he wants me to go somewhere, he wants me to do something. This is, you know, uh, this is what I'm supposed to purchase. Like if I have these two things and I'm like, I don't know which one, Lord, show me what the best decision is. I'll pray and I won't know. And then over time, I'm just praying and all of a sudden, boom, I will just know 100% with surety, a certainty in my soul. And I'll know at that moment because I prayed so many times and didn't know. Now I do know and I have confidence in that. And I'm able to move forward in faith and in obedience uh, feeling very strongly in my soul that God has given me the answer that I'm seeking. Sometimes we're not even seeking an answer. Just like on this 10 cities in 10 days, I had no plan to go anywhere, do anything, but I had a burden this particular evening that I, I wanted to do something in this time. You know, you just have this burning desire to lift up your voice and God gave me this revelation to go and do this. And I was like, oh, wow. Um, ah. And it was difficult. I didn't want to. In my flesh, I didn't want to. I, I knew that there would be a lot of misunderstandings. A lot of people would take things the wrong way. And, and I was very pleasantly surprised at how well it was received after people began to see with their eyes and understand exactly what I was doing. But that was just through God speaking. Uh, when I went to D.C., I didn't plan. I planned to go to D.C. and preach in D.C. just like I had preached in every other city. But me and Jalen were on the plane. Uh, on the way to Washington, D.C., and, and I prayed, said, God, what do you want to preach about today? I was just going to preach about the regional sin, the, the principalities that are going on in that area. And uh, he began to show me that uh, he had a specific message he wanted me. Because I actually, in my mind, in my heart, my original intent was I wasn't going to go back and preach the same type of message that I had preached in D.C. in front of the Capitol building three and a half years before that, which was a message of judgment against America in sackcloth. Uh, but now having come back, I, I plan to just preach against the, the regional sin. And uh, God showed me differently. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He began to show me a very specific message once again that he had for me. And I, I even groaned in my flesh. I said, oh man, because it's difficult sometimes to obey the Lord. It's okay to be human. The amazing thing is God uses us weak human beings because it gives him the glory. You see, without his power, without his, 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 his spirit to, to empower us, we can't do anything good. We are so broken and busted and, and full of just garbage, you know. And God, he takes us as spiritual orphans. He cleans us up. He brings us home, wraps us in that robe of righteousness, and begins to change everything about us. And, and, but all the glory goes to him. We, we read 1 Corinthians 1. Go through and read that chapter. Let the Lord speak to you. Uh, you know, uh, talking about, you know, What's, what's wisdom with men is just foolishness with God. And, and, and you know, the wisdom of the wise will fail because all glory belongs to God at the very end and even now. So God is faithful, you guys. I think I'm good for today. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Really, really cool that I'm able to do this live stream on my camera um, really, really cool. I'll try to do some videos. I see so many more questions. I, I'll try to do some more videos here in the future answering questions. But you know what? I, I This channel is to be a place for us to come together and to put aside your petty differences because we all have different things. We read our Bible. We have different theology. We come from different backgrounds. I'm not here trying to say that uh, we're just going to accept every theology and belief. That's not what I'm saying. But what I want to do is have this be a place where if you're hurting and you're broken and you're looking for answers, I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care what background you are. If you want to hear from God, you're welcome on this channel to receive from God because that is our intent. We want to spread the fire of the living God his true, real, consuming fire, not strange fire, but the consuming fire of God in this time, preaching in faith. We want that fire to spread and we want his, his word to go forth and we want his light to shine. We want to be that city on a hill and we want people to taste and see that he's, he's good. So I don't even care if you're a Hindu or a Muslim or someone from another faith. I'm going to stand on my Christian principles and I'm going to tell you, you have to have Jesus. You must repent for your sins. He is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you cannot find eternal life except through Jesus Christ, except by being born again. But if you want to be on this channel and you're Muslim, you're a Hindu, you're from a different religion, and you can hear my voice, 
My heart is to win you over into the kingdom of God. My heart is to, to, to see you converted into Christianity. Not to be religious, but to have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of your soul so that you can have life and life more abundantly. So you're welcome on this channel to hear the messages. What I don't welcome are religious spirited people who just want to argue and cause problems and sow discord and do all those things that God speaks about in the book of Proverbs that he hates. You say and you're a Christian, but you come in here and you're just causing problems. That's not the heart of God, my friends. It's not. Argumentative spirits, these are demons that you have at work in your life. You have to seek freedom. All right? There's so many people out there who are angry and bitter and hurting inside and you're just trying to transfer that over to other people. You're hurting and bitter. You want everybody else to, to hurt and be bitter. And that's not godly. We have to fix ourselves first. And we only do that through surrender, through submitting to God, submitting to godly authority, growing in the, in the faith and in, in spiritually, fasting, prayer, reading His Word. There are no easy substitutes. There are no quick fixes. There's no shortcuts. You have to do the work. You have to seek the face of God. You have to seek the face of God. Sure, we're saved by grace through faith, but it doesn't end just in salvation alone. If that's the, 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 the end of what you, what's important to you, you've missed the heart of God, and, and I would say you're, you might not even truly be born again. We need to seek the face of God continually because God put you on this earth to do something for Him. He has a purpose for your life. He wants to use you. Let him use you in this time. Okay, so once again, hashtag TOC Bible giveaway. I have three books I'm going to be giving out. I have a Holman Study Bible, KJV, very, very big Bible. Uh, will help you to... Um, every time I open this, a disobedient... The other time was laying aside your altars of the heart. Talking about a disobedient nation. I think God's trying to speak to us, you guys. So... Study Bible I'm going to give away. It's not brand new. You can see the um, the ridges here on the spine, but I will send this to somebody. And then I have two KJV Bibles. One is black. One is brown. Very beautiful print, binding, font. Very good. So whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, hashtag TOC Bible giveaway. Make a video less than three minutes. Explain how you like to read your Bible, what methods you take, tips for other people. Use your creativity, and I will just select people at random uh, to, to win these things. Tell me in the video, in those three minutes, which item you would like, um, and I'll try to make that happen if I can, but I only am giving away these six items, so I, I can't give away to like 50 people. Um, but I will try to do the best that I can. If you don't have a Bible and you're living in a different country and you're just desperate to have any Bible, I have some Bible, some extra Bibles I can give you, I can send to you, make a video, do the same thing, uh, but I will try to, it, look, it doesn't, it's not difficult to make these videos. It's just so that I can identify the people who want them, and it's an easy way to do that, and I can reach out to you, leave your email uh, in the description of your video or something so that I can contact you to let you know that you have uh, been selected to receive these these free things. I'm just trying to do some fun stuff, you know. Um, it's not a big thing. It's just I'm trying to, you know, trying to get you guys involved, do some fun stuff. Uh, what else do we have going on? So God is faithful. He is good. We love him so much. I don't want to make this too long, although I'm just having too much fun with this camera. You guys, I'm having a lot of fun right now. It's 40 minutes in, and I just want to keep talking. Well, I just talk for like six hours. Why don't I? I'm kidding. I can't do that. Uh, but this is a lot of fun. I really enjoy being able to broadcast over over the camera. Super, super cool. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna go. Love you. Let's just pray real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up, we give you glory. I thank you for every person uh, that's a part of this ministry, that's working hard to, to, you know, just to further your kingdom in this ministry and other ministries, partner ministries, even ministries that, that aren't connected, that, that are just doing the work of the Lord. God, I bless them. I pray that you would bless them. I lift them up to you, God. Use them in a mighty way. I pray that you would protect them from every uh, attack of the enemy, every accusation, every uh, fiery dart that the enemy would try to send against them. Just bless them and be with them. Bring them resources. Bring them uh, just a, a furtherance of, of their ability to spread the gospel and to work for you in this time. We love you so much, and we thank you, God, that you are so good to us. 
Move in us, God. Transform us. Help us to be more like you. Help us to have the mind of Christ. Help us to be full of your spirit. Help us, Lord, to do those things that are pleasing to you alone. Help us to have a heart after you alone, God. To lay aside every other thing. To, to put aside the weight of sin that so easily besets us. And to lay it on the altar. Let you burn it up, God. Cleanse us in your, your holy, precious blood, God. Help us to be, uh, to, if we have not been baptized, God, help the, those people out there who need baptism, Lord. How important it is for us to be baptized. So, Lord, I pray that you'd burden their soul not to wait until the perfect situation or to have the, the most mightiest men of God that can do it, but to just go out and get it done because we know it is a command from you that we have to get baptized, Lord God, and that, we, uh, that we're, we're seeking the heart of God by being obedient to you, Lord. And all of these arguments over whether we have to or we don't have to, that it, would, it can just go away because if we're all baptized, it doesn't really matter because we've all been baptized. And, and Lord, we know that this is incredibly important to you. So help us to get those things done. Help us to study and show, your, show ourselves approved, God. Help us to, to read your word, to understand it, to know what you're saying in this time, uh, to be led by your, your righteous right hand, God. Speak through us and use us in just a mighty way, God. There's so many brothers and sisters who watch this channel who are trying to start their own, uh, their own, uh, whatever you've led them into, God, whether it's a channel on YouTube, a page on Facebook, a, an Instagram page that will just glorify you. There's so many people out there who are wanting to be used through social media, and uh, these are good tools that we can use to glorify you. So thank you, God, for giving us this technology to use uh, for the furtherance of your kingdom, but Lord, help them to know how to do it, what to do, to, to have knowledge of these things, to give them resources, to have the items that they need, and um, just to be able to glorify you in every way possible. God, I pray that this tool that you are building for Torch of Christ can be implemented soon on the website so that all the people who are volunteering uh, to be a part of future missions and future trips and, and offering their skills and their talents. God, that it would just be available for them to do that and go on the website and be able to input that. Please let that be done, God. Let it be done expeditiously, please, God. Uh, forgive us for our sins. Lord, I pray that you would just open up travel, if it so be your will, so that we can travel and, and, and be able to spread your word and be able to spread the gospel so that more people can be won into your kingdom. Lord, we know that... These are very perilous times, and, and darkness has abounded uh, in, in a great way. But Lord God, we know that where sin abounds and darkness abounds, that your grace abounds much more so. So Father, we stand on your word by faith through your promise that you are going to uh, just give us all spiritual power that we need to overcome the enemy and to really just have breakthrough in this time. We claim the victory in Jesus' name. Help us to walk by faith and in the grace of God, showing mercy and compassion and love to others, to demonstrate your heart and your mind in everything that we do, to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, God. Uh, Lord, I pray your Spirit would just bear fruit unto righteousness in us and that we would just take time to fast and to pray. And we don't need to do it outwardly, but it's supposed to be, uh, unless we're doing a corporate fast, God, help us to do it secretly in, in the quiet hours, crying out to you, crucifying the flesh, not making concessions, but Lord, to really just do a biblical fast and, and laying ourselves on the altar to be that living sacrifice. We thank you, God. Help us to, to, to just be your hands and your feet in this time. We love you and we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, there's one more thing I'm going to actually do that, that the Lord brought to mind while I was in prayer. I'll be right back. Uh, give me one sec. Give me one second. So I have this uh, gimbal for phones. It's actually in a pretty cool case. I love the way that it's set up. I want to give it away to somebody, a, a young godly content creator, somebody who, who wants to make videos on YouTube or evangelism videos out on the street, post them to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. I want to give this to somebody, but I want to make sure that it's going to somebody that, that is going to use it properly. It's for your cell phone. It's called the, um, the Zion Zoom, I think. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, Zion Zoom. I don't know how to say it, um, but it's it's a really nice gimbal. Um, 
it, it works quite well. I like it a lot. There, there's no, the only thing I don't really like is you can't pan or it, there's, I don't have my other one, but the, uh, what a gimbal really needs to have is this little button that you can use to like raise or lower uh, your camera. And this one doesn't, but it has some really cool other features. It comes with a little tripod that you can put your camera on also, or not your camera, but your phone. Um, and that has a cord where you can connect your phone to the, the, the gimbal um, and it gives you some additional features. I never really use this too much because I have a big phone and uh, it's, it doesn't work with my phone. But it's in a case, it's really cool. Um, I, pref I prefer the, the, my new one, my DJI. It's a DJI, uh, I don't remember what it's called. But anyway, I wanna give this, give this away. So if this is you and you're a young content creator, you're using YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, uh, to make content, let me know. Still do the video, just like I told you, TOC Bible giveaway, hashtag TOC Bible giveaway. But in the video, uh, tell me that you're a content creator. Leave your, leave your link or whatever it is uh, with the video in the description, whatever, and then I can go and check your channel out or whatever. And if I see that you, you really have a heart for God, not just to be making videos, but if you truly have a heart to, for God, you're truly trying to, to do better, be better, and you just don't maybe have the resources to get something like this, um, I'll just prayerfully uh, figure out who you are and I'll send it to you. So that's pretty much it, guys. God bless you. Uh, have a good night. Man. So much insanity in this comments. Uh, people be talking about crazy stuff. All right. I guess that's YouTube for you, though. Love you guys. Hope you all have a good night. Much love. Bye-bye.